My future stepdaughter destroyed my wedding dress a week before the wedding. I'm torn between. I am beyond frustrated right now, and am on the verge of giving my fiancé, Alan, 39-year-old male, an ultimatum that I really don't want to give. Alan and I have been dating for about three years and have been engaged for a year with our wedding date in a week. He told me on our first date he was a package deal. His daughter Rose is his whole world. I was perfectly okay with it, and we started hanging out together. Alan's ex, Carrie, 38 female, is still in the picture as she and Alan are co-parenting. Carrie doesn't like me one bit. Alan told me that he and Carrie had been high school college sweethearts, and she had always held on to hope that he'd come back to her. But Alan also confided in me that Carrie wasn't a great partner. She adores Rose. But she treated Alan badly during their entire relationship. You name it, she did it. Emotional abuse, gaslighting, financial abuse, belittling, etc. He finally got the courage to walk away from her when he discovered she was having an affair. Rose was maybe six when Alan learned about the affair. Unfortunately, the court still granted Carrie 50 50 custody despite the amount of evidence against her. Rose and I have had a bit of a strained relationship. I understand it having grown up in a divorced home that both parents remarried. She's a preteen and has some conflicted thoughts about her dad marrying a new woman instead of going back to her mother. But she's been really haughty and nasty to me. She makes cutting comments and will respond with, You're not my mother, when I ask her to stop. Alan has tried to set down ground rules, but she flippantly tells him that OP's not going to last. I put up with it because I love Alan and sometimes Rose behaves herself. Seriously, she's not a horrible kid. She gets good grades in school. She's in the youth symphony and takes dance classes. She's really popular, bubbly, and friendly when she isn't being mean to me. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. Alan and I have talked about it constantly and have even involved Carrie, but Carrie just brushes it off, telling me to mind my own beeswax. We have tried therapy, groundings, and everything else, but nothing works. That brings us to tonight. A couple of weeks ago, alternations on my wedding dress was finished. I was really excited. My late grandma, who I was really close to, made her own wedding dress after seeing photos of Grace Kelly and many women in our family have worn it to their weddings or have had their own dresses designed after it. As I'm taller than my grandma, I had mine made. It's really special to me. I have the dress saved in my closet, tucked in a garment bag. Alan and I don't live together. However, my apartment is close to one of Rose's friends, so we have an arrangement that on some days Alan has custody, Rose will hang out at her friend's house and then come over for dinner with Alan and me. After we watch a movie or play Nintendo Switch, Alan will take Rose to his place. Today was one of those days. Alan was running late from work and called to let me know. Rose arrived and everything was normal. I stepped into the kitchen to finish preparing dinner, leaving Rose alone. If I had any inkling of what was about to happen, I would have done something different. Dinner was ready and I went to get Rose. I passed my bedroom door and something about the way the sliding closet door was positioned made me want to check. My dress had been cut to pieces with a pair of scissors and was covered with glitter paint. My veil is torn to shreds. It's completely ruined. I broke down crying. I was too upset to even be angry. Alan arrived and found me in a mess. He was beyond furious and went to Rose, confronting her about it. Rose admitted it with a shrug of her shoulders and said, What's the point? She's just a fat old cow anyway. Alan confiscated her cell phone and immediately called Carrie to discuss a punishment. I don't know how or why, but this is the straw that is breaking the camel's back. I have gone through so much with Rose. I've tried to be caring and compassionate. And this is my reward? Now that my sadness has faded away, it's been replaced with a boiling anger. I'm tempted to just call off the wedding and leave Alan to deal with his brat of a daughter. This wasn't an accident. This was on purpose. But then I remember that Rose is part of Alan's life. I love Alan but I don't know if I can keep taking it. What do I do now? Am I the a-hole for telling my stepdaughter her friend's mom is the reason her dad and I are divorcing? Jack and I are getting divorced after two years of marriage. Jack has two children, but this concerns his daughter, Ella, 15-year-old female. The day Jack told me he wanted a divorce, we told the children after school. Ella was upset when she found out we are divorcing and went to her room. 
She came down after tea when it was just me and her in the house. Jack and his son had gone out. She asked me why her dad and I were getting divorced and wanted to know if it was because of her. Ella has struggled with an ED, and while it had caused some strain because we couldn't agree on how to help Ella, it is not the reason. I told Ella that she and her brother are not the reason for the divorce, but that her best friend's Imogen mom, Sophie, 34-year-old female, is. Sophie and Jack had an affair when she was 19. When the affair was exposed, Sophie's life basically imploded while Jack's pretty much remained the same. Just to state, Imogen is not Jack's daughter. They are friends now, but after the affair they would just be polite in the street and became friendlier over the years as the girls became close friends at school. I told Ella that Jack's continued friendship with Sophie and the running to her for advice is why we are getting divorced. Ella asked if Jack was having an affair with Sophie. I told her that Jack was denying having an affair with Sophie again, but I suspected it. She asked what I meant by again, so I told her that Sophie and Jack had an affair when Jack was married to her mom. Ella has not been speaking to Jack since our conversation. She has also lashed out at Imogen, telling her that her mom is a whore and is the reason her family is falling apart. They got into a physical fight at school which resulted in both Jack and Sophie getting called in to talk about it. In the meeting, Ella told them everything I had told her the night before and blamed Sophie for ruining her family again. Jack told her that Sophie isn't the reason. Jack told Ella the reason for the divorce is because he no longer trusted me because of a mistake I had made which had sent us to therapy. Months of therapy weren't able to repair his trust in me. After Jack and Ella came home, she is now not talking to me either. Jack is furious that I said anything to Ella and that I ruined Ella's friendship with Imogen. Jack snapped that it was not my place to say anything to Ella. He was angry that I was still stuck on his friendship with Sophie and continues to maintain nothing is going on. He told me that Imogen told Sophie in the meeting that she wants to move to a new school, where no one knows her mom is a whore, and that was my fault. Am I the a-hole? Ella asked me for a reason, and I told her, I do believe Sophie is the true reason, as the relationship between them is weird. Update. This blew up more than I thought it would. Both Ella and her brother were aware of the kiss. They were there when Jack was told. I referred to it as a mistake as that is what Jack refers to it as. He has said that he didn't consider the kiss to be cheating because I was drunk. I have moved out of the house since I made this post, and I am now staying with my sister until I find a place of my own. At the weekend, Ella reached out to Imogen and apologized for lashing out at her at school. They look like they've made up as Ella stated Imogen's over the weekend. Before she left, I apologized to Ella and told her that I shouldn't have dragged her into this. Ella told me that she would never forgive me, especially for damaging her friendship with Imogen, and is glad that her dad is divorcing me. I offered to pay for the girls to do something together, but Ella refused saying she didn't want to take my dirty money. I also apologized to Jack who told me that it was Sophie who needed the apology, not him as it was her life I had tried to ruin without a shred of evidence. I tried telling him that I just didn't believe that he and Sophie weren't having an affair and he snapped telling me that there is nothing going on with Sophie and she had actually just started seeing someone. He found out about this because she went to him for advice as he is the only person she knows who has also lost a spouse and dated again. He then told me that he wanted me to move out as Ella had told him that she wasn't going to return home while I was still here. So yeah, I've destroyed my relationship with Jack and his children because I was insecure. It's my own doing. I am the a-hole. My husband is cheating on me with my best friend. My husband and I have been dating since I was 19 and he was 22. We've been married for six years now. We have two kids and I'm six months pregnant with our third. Two years ago, I found out my dad has stage 3 colon cancer. My dad is my only parent as my mom passed away when I was 12. He's my favorite human and life without him doesn't seem as colorful. His laugh is contagious and he gives these big bear hugs that seem to make all of your broken pieces feel like they're perfectly in place again. Whenever I've had a hard day, he doesn't poke and prod and just lets me vent and listens. About five months ago, we discovered the treatments aren't working for him, and in direct quote of the doctor, he said, months, not years. Since then, he's gotten progressively worse and now is losing memory. 
He looked at the dog he got for me on my 21st birthday and said, wow, that's a nice dog, where'd you get it? My husband has been my absolute rock. He has been there for me holding my hand and helping me through this. He's been so loving and attentive to both my kids and I. Don't get me wrong. I am a mother first always. I don't allow myself to wallow. My kids are still loved, cared for, played with, and I haven't let my load slack around the house. Once my dad got his updated prognosis, my husband encouraged me to quit my job. About a month later, we discovered we were pregnant again, and I still hadn't let go of my job. I kept holding out for some reason. After finding out I was pregnant again, he ensured me it was still okay to quit my job, that honestly it would save us a small fortune on daycare costs anyways. So I did. I quit my job. My best friend and I have been friends since diapers. Her family is like my family and vice versa. My mom and her mom grew up together. We've always been solid and right after my dad's appointment. When we found out he had so little time left, I drove straight to her house and she held me while I cried for hours. If there are soulmates in friend form, she was mine. Thick as thieves, is what my mom used to say. This morning as I was up with my three-year-old, he's sick. My husband's work alarm was going off. He has a few he sets, so I turned that one off and gently woke him up. He said he was up late working, so he took the morning off, rolled over and went back to sleep. As I went to turn off the remainder of his alarms, I saw a text from my friend on his lock screen that said, I'm assuming since there hasn't been an angry pregnant lady on my doorstep, you haven't told her about us yet? Time froze in that moment. I took his phone and walked away and just read their conversations. Four months this man has been fucking my best friend. Four months these people have been lying to my face. And I know what you're going to say, you should have seen the warning signs. But I've been clutching this phone in my hand for two hours and nothing. He has been so loving and attentive to me, but he always has been. So kind and gentle. There has been no late night work nights except for once in a blue moon. There has been no lingering touches between them or even glances. They act as they have since the day I first introduced them. How sick is it that she calls him her brother but she screws him? I know so many people get a moment of clarity in situations like this but I have none. Aside from being sad about my dad, I haven't changed. I'm still a loving wife and mother. I still doted on him and my children. I talk to him about how he is doing and how was his day every freaking day. I haven't allowed the ground to swallow me whole. I know what I have to do now, but I just don't want to. I'm about to lose my family and my support system in one blow. I'll confront him tomorrow. Today? Today I just need this last 24 hours of peace. As for her, I won't give her the satisfaction of a response. I don't care why she did it. She did it and it's done. I was always the friend who cleaned up her messes. After today, I will cut her out of my life like she never mattered at all. This has to be the hardest storm I'll ever weather. But damn it, I know it'll sail through it. If not for me, for my children. To get this out of the way, because to me it feels important. Yesterday, I scheduled a same-day appointment with my OBGYN and got tested for just about every STD, STI out there. I got the results for most back, and they were all negative. There's a few that take up to two weeks to get the results back for, so I'll be waiting on those. When I met with my lawyer, I brought everything on my end financially wise, including the wills from both my dad and my mom, and I managed to get my hands on his financial documents. He stores his in his office in a locked box. I also brought over everything we had set up financially for my children. While I'm not totally sure if it's everything I am pretty confident I got most of it, my lawyer was happy I managed to get my hands on that much. Ruth even handed over her will to me from both her and Bob to ensure I was taken care of in the divorce. My lawyer understands I am wanting a divorce immediately, however she wants to make sure she is thorough and isn't missing any key info. So hopefully I'll have actual divorce papers to give him in about 30 days, I'm not rushing her, though. I'm letting the professional do her job. Now for the sit-down. I asked Angie and Ruth to describe everything in detail on what happened. Angie, the revenge seeker that she is, forced them to sit through a slideshow she put together of all of the texts. I know a lot of you were concerned about one of them telling them sooner than later, but they were so secretive they didn't even tell their significant others about what was happening. Once the slideshow ended, Tyler tried lunging for Jess, and Joe actually had to force him to sit down. 
Tyler was shouting profanities at Jess and telling her she will regret this. Jess started crying and begging her parents for forgiveness. Bob looked his daughter in the eye and told her he will never forgive her for this, blood or not she is no daughter of his. He didn't raise his daughter to be this person. Jess was always a daddy's girl, so I think that cut her pretty deep. Jess is in the middle of a divorce herself, and her parents were giving her money for her lawyer, and they told her she is cut off from them both financially and physically. Tyler's dad was irate. According to Ruth, he looked like he was holding back on throttling him. From there, Tyler went straight home. I know because we have a ring doorbell camera along with a few cameras in the house for our kids to keep an eye on them when we aren't right next to them. Tyler came home and saw that most of mine and the kids' stuff was gone and he lost it. Started yelling and throwing things. The house is now trashed with a few holes in the walls for decoration. When he didn't find us there, he went to my dad's. While I did spend most of the day he was at work packing and moving things into my dad's house, we were already at his cabin. Tyler took a baseball bat to my dad's door trying, and failing, to break it down. My dad's neighbor actually called the cops on him and he was arrested. His parents refused to bail him out. I had an appointment with my therapist today. I've had one for a year now since I was struggling with my dad, and it felt good to just cry it out and let everything out about how I was feeling. It was very helpful and she gave me a few tools to work through my emotions with this one. I felt very grounded and empowered leaving my session today. I'm also planning on setting up my children with a therapist when we get back from the cabin to figure out the best way to deal with telling them. I know people said I shouldn't, but I will be telling them, just in an age-appropriate way. I don't want there to be secrets and lies between us. I've always been as open and honest as I can with them, again in the most kid-appropriate way. Just because they're small humans, they're still humans and still deserve the truth. I had a handful of comments telling me I should stay and every man cheats. I should work things out because most of our marriage was good. I refuse to believe all men cheat. My parents were married for 20 years, and after my mom passed, my dad never moved on. I watched my dad love my mom for 12 of those years and cherish her. I will not accept anything less than that kind of love. He never cheated, nor did she. While I'm not sure when I'll be ready to move on, falling in love is the absolute last thing on my mind at the moment. I refuse to let Tyler win and destroy love for me completely. I will move on from this. Jess started blowing up my phone demanding I fix this situation and immediately blaming me. My lawyer told me to not block texts, just in case they spill out an additional info I was missing. She was playing the poor me card very hard. The thing is, though, I never influenced Angie and Bob to cut contact with their daughter. They made that choice on their own. She actually started blaming me for stealing the love of her life. I introduced them when Tyler and I started dating, so not sure where that came from, and that Tyler is only with me for the kids. Honestly, I knew she was just trying to hurt me at that point. I didn't give her the satisfaction of responding, though. Between her and Tyler, I have about 200 missed calls. Tyler went from begging and pleading me to forgive him. Like I said, I didn't have divorce papers to hand him, so he's stuck in this unknown gray area. I also asked Angie and Ruth to not say anything about the divorce to him yet. Purely just for my satisfaction, honestly. I know it's slightly petty, but keeping him in that gray area of not knowing is my small revenge to him. To threatening to call the cops on me for kidnapping. Telling me Jess wasn't the only one. Bingo, just what I was looking for. To telling me I'm a stuck-up bitch to threatening me. To back to begging me for forgiveness. Honestly, it was just a whiplash reading those texts. I'd be lying in saying if those texts didn't hurt me and terrify me all at once, but I refuse to let them break me. As for both of them together, I don't think he is going to stay with her. I think he blames her for blowing up our marriage honestly. Who knows though, they deserve each other. I was initially okay to do a 50-50 split with Tyler for custody, but after his reaction I don't feel comfortable with that, so I'll likely be going for full custody. Jake has about 30 days of leave he's saved up and he's going to be using them to help the kids, and I get settled at my dad's house and honestly to be there, in case Tyler tries showing up going crazy again. He's been such a big help to the kids and I lately and I'm forever in his debt for this. Last night after the kids went to bed he hooked up his Xbox and we played a game called Diablo 4 together to help me take my mind off of things. It was fun. 
However, he did sort of confess that he's always had feelings for me somewhere in the midst of things, but also told me to not say or do anything back. He understands a relationship or anything like that isn't on my mind and won't be for a while. He isn't wrong. But just that he's felt that way since we were teenagers and just wanted to get it off his chest. Thank you again. Seriously. Your comments, your support, your messages, all of it has been one giant breath of fresh air. Just knowing I have a whole online community willing to go to bat for me has kept me treading water these last couple days. Your comments have popped in my head when I felt like just giving up on leaving him because it's so hard and gave me so many great points and helpful advice. I know I deserve more, and I can't accept his actions. And to the people who commented relating to my situation, my heart goes out to you all. This pain is awful, and I hate that so many of you can relate, but your stories have resonated deep within me. You all keep commending me for my strength, and my personal favorite is telling me how proud of me you are. Every time I see those words, I start to tear up. I'm blaming the pregnancy hormones. But your words have helped put me at ease so that way I could do what I knew I needed to do.